sea, wind at uh, measures mile, 10 o'clock, light and variable. Light and variable, love it. Pull the video, Wednesday morning, 15th of October. 9 o'clock in the morning, it's about 3 to 4 degrees outside. We're looking for a flat out run through the measured mile, trying to get a supersonic two way average today. It's a popular misconception that driving a land speed record in a straight line is about anchoring the steering wheel, planting your foot to the floor, and just waiting till you run out of fuel. If only it were that simple. The car moves around an awful lot. Any road car moves around a little bit, and it moves around more so as you go faster. When you go a lot faster, like 700 miles an hour faster, the car moves around a huge amount. The wheels are now skimming across the surface, the shock waves are generating uneven forces, gusts of crosswind, the car is sliding all over the track. In terms of doing a run in thrust SSC, big intakes very close to the ground. I'd put very little power on to start with to accelerate the car without sucking lumps of desert into the intakes. So initially just inching the throttle forward, letting the car roll slowly, progressively, around about 80% RPM on the engine, that's quite a low power setting, just letting the car accelerate no faster than a normal family saloon car would, uh, pulling away from the lights. SSC ready to roll. SSC with fast chase rolling, you are closed to the bike. Closed to the bike, SSC is rolling. Rolling up through 10, 20, 30, all the way up through 50, 60 miles an hour. The reheat nozzles at the back of the uh, engine start to close down to increase the uh, thrust output. Now accelerating more quickly through 90, 100 miles an hour. Now I've got really strong airflow into the engines. Now I can spin them up very quickly. Ease the throttle forward to the dry stop. The turbines spin up to maximum speed. They are now working flat out. To get more thrust, neat fuel goes into the exhaust and literally reheats the exhaust. Reheat. Check that both needles are showing a light up so that both light together. If one lights and the other doesn't, the car's going to want to go in a circle, which is not good at supersonic speeds. Having got both lit, ease my foot all the way down, both nozzles open fully, we get absolute full power and the car is now accelerating at something like 25 miles an hour every second. 250, 275, 300, 325, and it just keeps going at that speed, up to 500, up to 550, approaching 600 miles an hour. The airflow starts to go supersonic underneath the car, which affects the handling. It goes supersonic over the top of the car. 700, just about in control on the wrong line, don't worry about it. It's the loudest, highest pitch scream I've ever heard. The car tended to pull, because of the way it was constructed and the, the staggered rear wheels, tended to pull hard left at around 600 miles an hour and that was requiring up to 90 degrees of steering lock to keep it straight and on our first supersonic record run it was such a hard pull I actually had to throttle back to minimum reheat and close the uh, reheat nozzles right down to reduce the thrust rebalance the car. The car is now 50 feet offline and I'm steering it effectively on the throttle at 650 miles an hour as the car starts to respond, as soon as it starts to come back towards the line, I've got to put full power on or we won't get supersonic. And as it comes back to the line, take the opposite lock off, straighten the car back up. Now it's going supersonic. At over 700 miles an hour, all the airflow settles down, starts to go fully supersonic, and it runs absolutely as straight as a die. 700, just about in control on the wrong line, don't worry about it. 730, it's a good here, through the timing lights, which took four and a half seconds, about 4.7 seconds uh, to cover the mile through the timing lights. Unbeknown to me, we're also throwing a huge sonic boom out across the desert. My job is still only half done. I now need to stop the car at the other end of the track. So throttling back at the end of the measured mile, we've now got warning captions for all of the oil throwing towards the front of the engines because it's slowing down so quickly. The low fuel caption is flickering. The car is now slowing down at over 1G, over 20 miles an hour per second. But very rapidly, as the car gets subsonic, we've got a 10 ton car, very slippery 10 ton car, still hammering along at over 500 miles an hour. I'm waiting until the distance at the end, to the end of the track equals the speed I'm going, which is also changing. And when the two numbers match, punch out the parachute with a button on the left-hand ste steering wheel uh, yoke, and immediately parachute goes out, generates another four or five tons of drag, and bumps the deceleration back up to 20 miles an hour per second. 450, shoot one. Yes, we got it. Everything is going to be wonderful. 
The car is now going to slow down, and I'm still checking the numbers, slowing down through 400, 350, 300 miles an hour. There's about two miles left to run, 250 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour, we've got a mile left to run. I'm now going to shut the engines down. They've had a few seconds to cool. We don't want to ingest anything else. So shut the engines down, start to ease on the wheel brakes. And I'm now looking about half a mile ahead at looking at the recovery crew so that as we roll to a stop, I ease the brakes on and we stop exactly 14 miles from where we set off, right next to the guys who've got to turn a 10 ton jet car around, put the best part of a ton of fuel in, reload the parachutes, do a full systems and data check and confirm it's safe to go back through the measured mile within one hour. So stopping in the right place is the key bit to starting the pit stop on the fastest car in the world. As you see, the car is stopped, mile 13.5. That's be copied. As the station standby, as you see, has stopped, mile 13.5. As has stopped. The drive then involves repeating all of that and subsequently stopping the car at the other end and waiting for the timekeeper to have recorded it. 15th of October 1997, he came back with those famous words, pit station, this is USAC timing, I have some times for you. And they were supersonic and that record still stands today. The rest of the bolts have just arrived obviously.